Good evening, everyone. I hope you can all hear us. Um, thank you for attending this uh, webinar tonight. Uh, we had a few little technical details or issues at the start that I was struggling to get over. So um, we seem to be on now. You should all be able to see uh, Stuart uh, McRae, who's the Acting um, Principal Advisor, Strategic Planning and um, Natural Resources, and myself, Ambrose Horman, Manager of Development. Uh, we also have Joe Harrison, who's in our comms team, um, managing the, the, the session for us. So um, that's who is on this end. Uh, I see we've got about six attendees by the look of it. Um, so we might get straight into it. You should be able to see my screen, um, which is currently saying uh, public exhibition period for um, the, um, it'll come to me. Well, we've got to go back to the start. Sorry, mate. I'm just going to go here, start, stop slideshow. Sorry, everyone. I'm just going to get us up on the slideshow. We should all be seeing, hopefully, from beginning. Why is that? Go to slide one. So hopefully we can all see the Armadale Regional Council logo. I uh, apologise for that. That's my limited ability. Um, so I just want to check to make sure that's what we've got. Okay, so um, I'll kick us off tonight. Um, and no. So I just want to do welcome to country. Uh, so we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, the Armadale Regional Community pays tribute to their love of land, love of people and love of culture. Um, just when we are going through this, if you want to submit uh, questions, by all means, um, we'll have some question time at the end of the session uh, to, for people to ask questions and so we'll answer those questions as we, we get to them. We do also have some questions that, uh, for you that Stuart will uh, touch on as we move through the slides. You can see here over on your, um, I'm guessing it's on your right hand side of your screen, you'll see uh, the go to webinar menu and you'll see the question section of the um, go to webinar and you can see type your questions here. So if you type your questions in there, we should all be able to see those uh, come through. Uh, and then obviously you've got to click on send once you've typed it. So make sure you hit send, otherwise it's just sitting in your, like a text message, it's just sitting in your session. Um, so we might just run a quick uh, test of questions. If people could all uh, have a crack at uh, answering the question of what is your favourite holiday destination, that would be uh, most appreciative. We just want to make sure that that's uh, working for everybody. So if you could all uh, do that now, that would be great. I can see some coming in. I've got the beach, I've got Armadale, of course, so that's great. Um, others, if you want to have a crack, you can, um, but obviously that, that's working, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so we'll, we'll move on. We'll get actually into um, the actual presentation. And here we are. So um, tonight, Stuart and I are going to be talking about the local strategic planning statement. I'm just going to give a little bit of background to start with, uh, and, and then I'll hand over to Stuart. Um, the council, uh, being the administrator on the 19th of August, resolved that council endorse the public exhibition of the LSPS for a minimum of 28 days as required under the Act. Um, and that commenced on the 31st of August and finishes on the 26th of uh, September with a view of hopefully getting a report back to the October Council meeting um, with, uh, with the summary of the submissions and, and making a recommendation for adoption. Uh, so 
so that's where we're at. We have put uh, it up on Council's website on that Have Your Say, and Stuart will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and we're also doing a series of uh, actual village visits and also uh, this webinar for, for people in the, the LGA. So with that being said, I will hand over to uh, Stuart and he can uh, take us through the, the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Ambrose. Thanks, everyone. Uh, new experience uh, for me, uh, presenting to a TV camera but uh, I will, will do my best. The draft LSPS um, and tonight's presentation is really an introduction to the document that is currently on public exhibition. So I'm going to go through uh, a series of slides which gives you an overview of um, or some of the background and the context of why we've produced this, um, a touching on some of the content uh, in terms of some of the priorities, some of the actions, a few facts and figures, and point you to some questions, survey questions that we'd like you to consider as we go through. So the, um, as I say, an, an introduction to the document, um, which is available on the website. The LSPS fundamentally is a 20 year um, vision for land use in the local government area, sorry, with technology. That's right. Can I go back one? Yep, you should be able to go back. There, is that one? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, um, working out who's controlling what here. Yeah, we've got a mouse and a keyboard. Um, Sorry. A 20 year vision for land use in the local area, and that um, I will at attempt to explain that. So it's not a holistic strategic plan, it, it is um, deliberately designed to focus on land use outcomes. Um, it is also um, from an Armadale Regional Council a new plan for the future and for councils across New South Wales. And unashamedly, we're going back to basics. There's some work that we need to do to underpin our planning for the future. And so we've identified some actions to drive that, which you will see as we go forward. Um, I think I'm in control again now. You are. So um, in, in terms of legislative requirements, uh, amendments were made by the New South Wales Government to the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, um, which introduced new requirements for all New South Wales councils to prepare and make um, an LSPS. The, the Act um, has certain requirements. Uh, the basis for strategic planning in, in our local government area, um, and it references Triple bottom line matters of the economy, social and environmental matters. We have to identify what are the planning priorities for our area, um, and importantly, they need to be consistent with the regional plan, it sits across the top, and the council's own community strategic plan. Beyond that, uh, we have to identify what actions we'll undertake to fulfil those priorities, and what is new in a land use planning space, not necessarily in a council corporate planning space, is that we have to identify and provide an implementation plan. Um, so we, we have to tie ourselves down to when we're, when we're going to undertake the actions. The, the blue, the light blue bubble in the middle um, on the slide, the local strategic planning statement, shows you how um, the, this new document creates a bridge from the council, um, council documents on the right, the local environmental plan and development control plan, and the regional plan um, developed by the state government on the left. So previously there was, there was a long jump from the regional plan to the local development control mechanisms. So the LSPS creates that bridge and localises the regional plan content what it also does is pick up any of the land use elements coming out of the, cons the community strategic plan. So some of you may be familiar with this document um, available on the DPIE website. Um, the current regional plan for the New England Northwest. It is, and I believe will be under review, um, if not next year, the year after. It talks about um, the vision for the region as being nationally valued landscapes and strong successful communities. 
from the Great Dividing Range to the rich Black Salt Plains. So a high level vision and we need to bring that to the ground in our local government area. Looking at the, the extract from the regional plan map, you'll see that Armidale and Tamworth are both identified there in a similar manner, um, both identified as regional cities. So similar from a state perspective, um, the state is treating Armidale and Tamworth um, as, as having similar controls. Gyra, in terms of our local government area, is also identified as the centre. The major road network is also identified there. So that flows through into some specific actions from the regional plan. The other key document that I referenced before is our own community strategic plan. Um, under that is the resourcing strategy, delivery program, operational plan and so on, which is a 10 year plan that guides what we do, a uh, delivery program linked to the local government election cycle every four years, operational plan every year and an annual report. So once again, we need to take account of what's in those two documents in preparing our LSPS. So back to, um, and um, a, a little bit of a repeat, uh, a 20 year land use vision for our local area. Fundamentally, um, how are we going to manage growth and change over the 20 year period, but taking account of what are the special characteristics of our local government area. The structure of the LSPS is, has been guided by the, the state guidelines, um, which, so we've identified a, a vision statement, which I'll come to in a, in a moment, and then I'm going to work through um, at a high level, the content in each of the boxes and give you some examples of the content there. So the planning priorities that sit under the vision statement, the actions and what we're calling the administrative actions which sit in the implementation plan. So the, the draft LSPS vision um, is on the screen currently. If you bear with me, I might read through that. Um, with this, this is the umbrella under which the balance of the LSPS content sits. So the Armidale Regional Council Local Government Area is an exemplary sustainable region of New England, defined by its rich agricultural lands and its attractive natural environment, complemented by a series of well-serviced and interconnected communities with the city of Armidale as the regional hub. The Armidale area offers a positive, healthy and vibrant country lifestyle, its identity is founded on its diverse economy, cultural heritage, civic and educational institutions, and strong sense of community. So that is, in broad terms, the vision that the LSPS is seeking to achieve over a 20 year period. What we've done in terms of organising the content in the LSPS is to um, group them into three um, sustainability themes. Um, plus infrastructure. So the um, EP&A Act, uh, one of the objects of that is to promote ecologically sustainable development and it looks at the triple bottom line. We also have to take account of the regional plan goals and the community strategic plan directions. Um, but so we've, we have grouped things in, under those three headline items, um, but we've also included infrastructure on the basis that council provides some significant elements in terms of water, wastewater, waste disposal and the like that, are, that we believe should be identified in, in, a separate, um, in a separate theme. At the end of the day, there are 21 planning priorities that we've formulated uh, to facilitate achievement of the vision. Each of them, uh, in effect, have equal priority. Um, and I guess you would argue that we sh they're a collective um, of items that allow us to move towards the vision. So each of them needs to be considered taking account of the content of the other priorities. I'm going to go through each of those quickly. Um, there is more detail in the LSPS document itself, uh, in, particularly in terms of the action plan. But <clears throat> as I move through them, um, I'll also give you some facts and figures and I'll return to some of the priorities in terms of actions just to give you an idea about how, how the document that we've prepared works. So from a community perspective, in terms of the planning priorities, there are 
um, four in this grab bag, population growth. Um, so the asterisks mean there's further information to come. Population growth, where we talk about actually utilising the state government projections when we're doing our planning. Um, number two, a settlement net network. So we're saying that we should be planning for each of the settlements in our local government area, um, not just Armadale, not just Gyra, but also the five villages, as well as the rural and environmental areas as well. In, in planning for growth, um, or change over time, we need to look at the requirement for land for housing. Um, and we need to make sure that obviously the land is suitable for that purpose and we're able to service it. But equally, as the population um, change, grows and changes over time, we have to look at what the housing options are that we need to provide. Again, more on these things to follow. Um, as Snapshot, some facts and figures. So in terms of building approvals for the Armadale region, we've got 2009 on the left to 2019 on the, on the right. The orange part of the bar relates to residential um, approvals, the annual value approved in thousands of dollars. The gray part of the bar relates to non-residential. If you, you can see the influence of the Armadale Hospital redevelopment and the Armadale Secondary College um, in terms of inflating those figures since 2010. But what I think the chart would show you if you, if you draw, drew an average line is that there's actually a decline in the value of approvals over time. So if we are to accommodate additional growth, then we have to consider and, and if this reflects a reduction in the number of houses being built, constructed over time, then how are we going to um, redress that, reverse that trend potentially? Is it um, because of land shortages or are there, are there other considerations that are influencing what's happening in our local government area? Some of the things we need to think about. From an economy perspective, um, the state, and this links back to the comparison with Tamworth, um, tells us that we need to look specifically at the Armadale CBD and facilitating the revitalisation of the CBD as a critical driver or planning priority. Equally, we, we need to be considering how we're going to protect important agricultural land and facilitate agribusiness and related activities and, and facilities. Part of the Part of the priorities are also to make sure that we have you know, land that's suitable um, for the types of commercial and industrial businesses that we're seeking to attract to this area, if indeed we're looking to promote, as the vision said, a diverse economy. As part of this also is facilitating um, facilities for tourism. You can see in a number of these things, the titles relate to land or facilities Again, back to the fact that the LSPS is a land use planning document primarily. But jumping into some facts in terms of our top four industries and these are looking at looking at jobs and the value of the industries is similar in terms of percentages. You see that education and training is is by far and above our largest um, uh, provider of jobs. Um, twice what is in retail trade. Uh, the hospital obviously has a significant impact in terms of healthcare and social assistance, but, but also you note the importance of agriculture, forestry and fishing um, through here as well. From a tourism perspective, as one of the drivers of the economy, um, this chart looks at um, domestic tourism from 2011 through to 2019. Yeah, the grey bar on the bottom is domestic day trips, which is um, effectively a flat line, but perhaps trending trending down over a longer period of time. Um, domestic visitor nights, um, however, is, is trending up. One of the things, um, as you may well be aware, if we can convert a day trip into a visitor night, we will have a significant impact on the economy by providing dollars in, into the economy through accommodation, meals, and additional retail and other activities as well. 
So again, something for us to consider in terms of how we might achieve that. From an infrastructure perspective, and, and this is the, the big group, um, item 10 um, is largely around council infrastructure itself, planning for and facilitating the delivery of infrastructure, taking account of growth and change over time in our population. We also need to consider transport corridors and the airport specifically in that. But there are other items that are identified um, that flow down from the state as well. Things around whether or not we should be clustering um, more health related businesses around the hospital, uh, whether we should be promoting um, development, further development of education facilities but also into things like arts and culture, open space and recreation. And um, indeed, as, as part of the new renewable energy zone, what opportunities there are for development of production facilities. To just highlight, this is an aerial photo of the Armadale Regional Airport and to highlight the land use elements of this, um, we will need to consider um, the existing and future operation of the airport um, and then things like security and, and other things. Um, but what we need to consider from an LSPS perspective is what are the uses that might occur on the airport itself, but more particularly, what are the uses, land uses, um, that might be able to be developed around the airport that impact on its operation and um, not only the uses, but also the subdivision pattern. So they're the sorts of things that we need to be considering through the LSPS to protect the operation of the airport. Um, the final group of four to make up the 21 relate to the environment, both the natural and the built environment, um, protection of areas of high natural environmental or biodiversity value, protection of, of cultural heritage, um, sites, um, but also looking at things relating to contaminated land and natural hazards as well, whether bushfire or floods of those items where we, we need, well, the state government has done some mapping um, and we need to take account of those and then consider our own local issues and how they influence the planning that we intend to undertake for the future. So an example here of an, a map from the state government um, identifying key environmental assets. So that is that is where we would start um, with the mapping that's already available from the state government, including things like good quality agricultural land and the like, that then allows us to focus in on the areas of most interest to us, potentially from a resource of availability perspective at the council we might focus on the areas that are undergoing change or most likely to undergo change as we plan for the future. So what, what we have done, um, and as Ambrose mentioned, we, have, uh, we are running a series of village um, and other locality-based activities. Um, we've been to Ben Lomond, for example, and Ebor, Black Mountain, Gyra. Um, in ordinary cases, we would have people sitting around tables but in, uh, in our current uh, circumstances, we have put a survey on the website to allow you and others to, to have a look at the 21 draft LSPS priorities, um, go through the document. We're asking via a survey on the Your Say link to tell us which of those, um, and we've asked for five, which of those you think are the most important. Now, there's an opportunity to actually rank all 21 if you choose, but the way we will use that information based on people's top priorities is to review our actions or our implementation plan. We have made um, some assumptions about what we think are the most important things, the things we should do first, and, our act, and the draft action plan reflects that. But if the feedback from the community indicates that other um, priorities are more important or different ones than we had thought, then we will need to consider our implementation plan. Equally, if there are other issues that we haven't identified that people believe are important strategic land use priorities for the local government area, 
then we need to take that on board as part of, the, of the, any formal submissions that we receive. So I'm going to drop into and, and give you three examples from the action plan um, that are designed to facilitate achievement of the planning priorities. Again, we're influenced by the regional plan and, and the community strategic plan, and I'll show you how, how that happens as well. So the first example um, relates to the utilisation of the state government planning population projections, sorry, when planning for growth and associated development. So we're, we're saying we need to endorse those projections as the basis for all of our strategic planning activities, and we need to do that straight away. Um, the state uses their own projections, um, so there's a projection for the whole of Australia, but then there's a projection for New South Wales and a projection for each of the local government areas within that. Um, the state government uses those to, for decision making in relation to provision of its facilities, so schools and the like. So it's important that we take account of those. We might decide that you know that's the baseline, and we might aim a bit higher, but it, we we have to take account of, of what the state is saying. Um, and then the second point is is as the projections are updated after each census then we need to take account of any changes that are happening. So some, some facts and figures, again, um, so 2016 population of the local government area was 30,300, um, increasing, projected to increase to 2041, oh, sorry, to 38,100 in 2041. I have trouble with 2041 every presentation. Um, a couple of things to note there, um, obviously on the left, there's a reference to the population change and natural change, um, 3,250, so less than half is relates to births over deaths. Um, over 4,500 of the total population increase relates to migration. Um, my understanding of these figures is we are in fact losing population within New South Wales but we are gaining population from overseas. So there are federal government decisions around the, you know, um, resettling people in Australia that are influencing our growth figures. Where that takes us in terms of some of the breakdown and some of the issues around change, the change in the population, not just the growth, you'll see on the left-hand side, population by age, if you look particularly, the, the blue bars are 2016 figures, um, the orange bars are 2041. So you'll see that the 75 plus age group in particular is going to more than double over that period of time. What is interesting in an Armidale perspective, um, an Armidale Regional Council perspective, is the 15 to 29 age group is fairly strong um, and the state is saying that that is, that is largely being driven by the university, um, but also boarding schools. A number of the other local government areas in our region um, are projected to decline in population, and they see people finishing school and leaving their local government area, and a general ageing of their population. So both Armidale and Tamworth are the only two local government areas in our region that are projected to grow across this period of time. The ageing of the population also has an impact in terms of household type. So on the right hand side, you can see, for example, that lone person households are increasing from 3,400 in 2016 to 4,900 in 2041. So not only do we need to provide more houses um, for a growing population, we also need to consider the form of those houses if the population and is changing and there's an increasing number of single persons, single person households, then perhaps we shouldn't just be providing three to four bedroom houses on 800 square metre blocks, for example. We should be looking at increasing the proportion of other types and styles of housing. Again, something for us to consider over time. In terms of the second um, planning action example, so we 
are looking to facilitate and protect the operation of Armidale Regional Airport. So as I mentioned before, um, we need to undertake some studies to identify the existing and likely future operational requirements of the airport. And in the context of an LSPS, we then, then need to look at the land use planning implications of those operational requirements. The items, the dot points identified below, RPA and RPP, um, relate to regional plan actions and regional plan priorities. So in this particular case, by way of an example, the state government is saying um, that we need to promote aviation-related employment opportunities and precincts. And through the regional plan, we also need to protect airports from the encroachment of incompatible development. Um, as, so RPA, regional plan actions, regional plan priorities are things that relate specifically to Armidale Regional Council local government area. So the regional plan says that we should maximise the opportunities of the airport to meet demand and provide greater access to tourism opportunities. So there's some directions that we're being given by the state government in terms of our planning for the future. You will, of course, and may be aware that there is already a master plan for the airport. So we need to, uh, we, you know, we may need to refresh that at the time that we get to considering and looking at those studies. But the other important thing from a from a council perspective in relation to the priority identified by the state government is, is what the graph on the right shows. So it's identifying airport passengers from 2008 through to 2019. And you can see um, the combination of inbound in grey and outbound in orange has effectively plateaued. Um, so for us to change and increase tourism or other elements, we may need to make some changes to the airport to increase, allow larger aircraft, extend runways or the like um, as a series of potential actions that are being driven by the state priorities. Again, things for us to investigate, things that are potentially already in our master planning or other strategic plans, but we need to review um, and move forward from. The third example um, in terms of the presentation tonight is um, an intent to undertake planning uh, to facilitate the preferred development of each settlement. So we, we have, in terms of the existing action plan, um, said that we, we need to undertake or prepare a place-based strategy to guide future growth and development of each of the villages and immediate surrounds. Um, the intent uh, at this point is to commence that work later this year and into next year so that there is a holistic plan that guides the future development of those, of those places. Um, Gaira and Armidale also get a Guernsey in terms of the action plan, but we've specifically pulled out the villages as requiring some attention from a land use planning perspective. The five that are identified here are actually identified in the local environmental plans um, as being zoned a village. So what, what we have also asked, and as we've been visiting each of the each of the villages. Um, we've got two more to go this week, Wollamumbi and Hillgrove. We've been asking um, the residents of those places, what are the most important land use planning issues to be addressed in guiding future growth and development of their place? Uh, that's currently sitting on the Your Say um, page as a, a survey element. This is to help inform us in terms of our proposed future planning. So, we have to date received some, some valuable information from residents um, and others interested in each of the villages that we have um, visited that will kickstart the work that we're proposing to do later this year and next year. Rolling on then to the implementation plan. Um, so again, as I mentioned before, a little unusual in land use planning terms um, for Council to have to monitor and report on the status of its actions in this space. But a new requirement of the state government um, through the legislation and the link up into the local government act as well. 
So what, what we have said in terms of the actions that we have generated, so we're required, sorry, required to prepare an implementation plan. We have some say in what that says. We are saying that we will prepare a, a status report on the implementation of each planning action in the LSPS action plan um, every six months commencing in June next year. The intent is that we link into the reporting on the develop, development program or delivery program, sorry, under the community strategic plan. Um, that also links into the operational plan as well. In terms of other actions, what we, we also need to do is amend the community strategic plan. So the two pieces of legislation that are guiding these documents are tying things together. So the council needs to amend its community strategic plan to say that the LSPS is the primary tool for implementing the CSP community outcomes where they relate to land use planning. Our intent, um, given that there's a local government election next at the end of next year and a, a new community strategic plan will need to be prepared, is to amend, uh, incorporate the, the linkage to the LSPS as part of that amendment process or that review and amendment process. On an over, from an overarching perspective, there will be other requirements for updating and amending the LSPS but we have to um, prepare and make a new LSPS at least every seven years. Um, we will have to review it when the, when the state government releases a new regional plan in two years' time. So while it's a long-term plan, a uh, 20-year plan, we will need to just keep checking in and making sure that it is consistent with some of the overarching controls. One of the other um, actions that is proposed um, through the LSPS is to complete the process of merging uh, the two local environmental plans that we currently sitting have sitting over the um, local government area and guiding development. Uh, the Armadale Generic um, LEP and the Gaira LEP, both from 2012. So the intent is as a priority action, uh, commencing later this year and into next year, is to merge those two documents and create an Armadale Regional LEP um, so that there is one set of controls that apply to the whole of the area. Uh, that will, among other things, simplify the processes of, of um, assessing development applications and people who are developing in both local government areas will have one set of rules. But it will also simplify our processes as we move forward um, to respond um, and we undertake studies under the LSPS process, we will have one LEP to amend, not two, as we move forward. So in terms of some, some final um, facts and figures, um, as Ambrose mentioned, we've been on public exhibition since the 31st, um, closing on the 28th of September. Those of you who have registered also already know how to uh, do what I'm about to say. Um, which is to link through from the Your Say um, and then find uh, the public exhibition link uh, for the LSPS. Where we are headed next um, is that we will need to review um, any submissions received on the draft LSPS. Um, we, are, we have already received submissions. Um, we will receive informal and informal submissions from members of the community, but also from the state government. So each of the relevant state government departments will, uh, are and will review um, the LSPS and provide submissions to us, which we'll need to take account of. Uh, we will then need to amend and finalise the LSPS with the intent of reporting it back to council at the October meeting. Um, the November rider is there. Um, if we do receive a considerable number of submissions, we may need a little more time, but we're aiming for October. The intent is then to forward that to the state government um, and it, by the 30th of October. And then that's, that's the start of the planning process really from there in that we would look to commence LSPS actions in November and December rolling through into next year along the lines as I mentioned before. So we're really um, 
in terms of those of you who have had a look at the document, we're going back to basics. We've identified what we believe are the main priorities for, for guiding or driving our planning for the future. And we've identified a series of studies and other actions that are going to take us forward. So thank you for um, your attendance um, tonight, um, listening through that presentation. And I think we're, we're happy to take We've got um, some. Sorry. Did you want to do? No. No. So we've got uh, some questions over here. So uh, I, I'm hoping, Dorothy, that you could could hear us. Um, I'm hoping that that's not what has uh, has occurred for you, but I'm assuming we will um, have a recording available. But I, I'll confirm that with Joe. Uh, the next question is. Is the local environmental plan the same thing as EcoArc, or is that a different document? Um, oh, do you want me to take this one? Yeah. Roxy's paper. Um, they're two very separate documents. Uh, EcoArc is a sustainability document that is focused um, on sustainability actions. The local environmental plan is a statutory document that is created under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, and it's what stipulates uh, the zoning for pieces of, of, of land in the um, local government area and what is permissible and prohibited and, and exempt uh, on pieces of land. So they are they are two very, very different documents. Um, I might, Mark, Margaret's asked a question about um, a past employee. I might contact you, um, Margaret. She, Jocelyn um, resigned from council and has left council. Um, so she's gone back into um, private consulting. Um, at this stage, she's not still involved in the process. Uh, the next one is, is the vision statement current or aspirational? Do you want to take that one or do you want me to? Well, certainly the, the, intent, is that it's asp in, the intent is that it's aspirational. Um, if it is not um, to the extent that you believe appropriate, please feel free to feel that feel free to make a submission so that we can consider that. Uh, is it okay to keep sending questions? Yes, it is. Uh, these population projections have historically been very contentious to unambitious. What is the current situation, re current New South Wales population projections? Do you want to rock this paper or you want well, me to? Do you want to go back to that slide? slide? So we're just going to jump to a slide here. Uh, go to slide. Uh, which slide do you think it is, Stuart? Uh, it's after. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, population projections. That, that one. Would, that would be. That's it. it. There we go. There. So um, I'll throw to you okay, if you want. I'll, I'll try. And so the, the, these are the current. These numbers reflect the current. Um, population projection, New South Wales government population projection. So I think in terms of are they too uh, unambitious? I mean, we're predicted in the New England Northwest to grow by 0.9 of a percent, um, which is the greatest projection in our uh, New England Northwest uh, regional area. TAM was projected to grow at, I think, 0.6. So given their existing population, that's around about the same amount. Uh, there is, There was some talk about yeah, being uh, a little bit, or trying to go to a higher level. As Stuart said in that to the last slide, this is back to basics. So let's get us all working on the same population projections um, and get our basics right, and then we can start launching into something that may be a little bit more ambitious. Um, naturally, you've got to find that population as well. Um, I think just just to build on that, I, there have been some recent discussions with the state government around the projections, and and by um, talking to each of the councils in the in our region, and as I mentioned before, most of them are, de are projected to decline in population over time. So um, they would argue that that's not the case, and they're doing things that will prevent that from happening, um, but. The question then becomes if if we say or if they say they're not going to decline, they're going to grow, or if we say we're going to grow faster than this, then we have to convince the state government that that is the case 
Um, and then we also have to convince them about where those people are going to come from because it's the same number of people that New South Wales is projected to grow that they apply across the whole of the state. So the, there are some, some bigger drivers behind each of these elements. I hope that answered that. The next one is, are you getting your growth in population from the New South Wales population, uh, population projections? However, these were done before COVID and in the wake of, hang on, I've just got to scroll down, in the wake of other things, UNE is reducing its staff, for example, also immigration will be reduced for the next couple of years. Um, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. um, the state government is going to have to review um, its projections. Um, there are two, I guess, schools of thought. One is that people will be leaving the city and heading to regional areas but we're also well aware that the university is, is reducing its staffing numbers and potentially moving to more online classes, which will have you know, in, impacts for Armadale's population. So we will be you know, keeping, um, keeping a close watch on what the state is saying, but also you know, trying to understand the broader things which are driving, um, driving our population growth and change over time. Uh, and I guess that also runs to the issue about trying, looking at diversifying economy and looking at other, other, other ways to provide people with jobs and keep them in the local area. Um, so, uh, again, with the airport and tourism, there hasn't uh, here hasn't COVID changed this. Um, I just moved my thing, and I don't think it. Um, yeah, look, again, as Stuart said, COVID's uh, certainly a relevant element. Um, these popular, I'm just trying to get it bigger. Um, these, uh, oh man, I've lost it. Sorry, Annette. Um, the population figures, if I'm right, Stuart, were done pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So the next population figures that get done by the state government would be very interesting to be able to compare sort of pre-COVID and, and post-COVID, so we'll actually understand a lot better yes. about um, around that. Clearly, clearly the numbers through the airport will, you know, will decline dramatically. So there's a series of implications, and I guess what we need to try and um, crystal ball is what, what, what is the bounce back? Um, how long will it take us to return to pre-COVID numbers um, if we do? Um, in terms of the next one, oh, you, uh, the next question yep. relates to infrastructure delivery and being very generic. Um, there doesn't seem to be a category for water security. Um, the, absolutely, the intent is, and, and this has been raised a couple of times previously, we need to, we need to specify the, specific, the items that sit underneath that. So water, water supply and water security is certainly a key issue, um, as is wastewater treatment and the like. So some of the comments we've received before is, well, there's a big grab bag that captures all of those things, but, but we need to specifically identify them. Uh, do you want me to read this one? Or do you want yep. to? Um, <clears throat> so will the merger of the LEP make more rigid rules for compliance Towns and small cities are quite different, aren't they? Um, do you want to take that or do you want me to? Okay. Um, so, well, I, the intent of the merged LEP is not to, to make things more stringent. Uh, it's certainly about bringing both documents together into the one document. So most of the, there's actually not a lot of difference between the two LEPs now. So we're, we're sort of tweaking it a little bit to get one merged document. I think an important element to inform uh, what happens in our, in our villages is what Stuart was talking about with that sort of uh, localised uh, land use planning at Ben Lomond and those. So drawing out what do those communities want to see in their, in their zones um, and then how do we facilitate that through the LEP so that it's not, a, it's not necessarily a one size fits all. Um, I hope that answered that, Margaret. Discussing the expansion of agribusiness, you discussed that this is a land use document, but what about water capacity? Where does the water capacity sit in this land use planning? For example, with the recent drought, 
uh, the amount of water available has been shown to be different from previous precipitations. Um, you want to take that? We're not letting go. Yeah. Um, we're, we're mindful that we're only a couple of moments from seven o'clock as well. Um, I think, uh, Annette, uh, another good question. The, and it runs to the integration of the planning priorities. Um, we can't look at any of the things in isolation. We, ne we have to consider um, the overlap. So we have to, in looking at whether it be you know, land for housing, land for industry, land for agribusiness, um, and the facilities um, that we might build on those, we have to consider our ability to service those. Um, so we can't just approve things without knowing that it's that we have that capacity. Um, so we've got a fair few questions left. So I'm just going to try and try and run through them so we don't run over too much. Uh, Annette's asked a question about council resolving the climate emergency, uh, Project Zero Thirty with the university. Would another planning priority sit here, such as reduce carbon emissions by 2030? adapt and mitigate the climate change in all planning processes or such the like. Uh, this kind of planning priority has been included in other uh, LGA, LSPSs. Do you want to tell that? I think, I think the simple answer is, is there. That, um, um, include, include that, or please include that as a, you know, as a submission to us. There's a number of things that we're receiving as, as other considerations and we need to consider all of those well aware that Council has a suite of existing strategies and so on that we need to make sure that we, we link up. So you know, please include that in the formal submission and we'll look at it in more detail. Uh, next one's a pretty easy one. Has the New South Wales Government agreed to the extension from the 1st of July to later this year? Uh, we have an agreement with the uh, Northern Office of the Department of Planning uh, that has set um, a revised timeline for us to submit our LSPS. So, um, but we are on a very, very tight, tight frame. Uh, the next one is what constitutes a submission? Joe's been uh, collating data as we've been going through and these, these questions will be part of that. Um, but we do encourage you, I think Stuart's gonna go to the, no. do you want it? No. Yes. We do encourage you to go to the Your, pay, uh, the Your Say page and make a submission through there. Um, and then we can collate all those up and, and move them into... Um, but, but otherwise, just to, you know, uh, in writing to the general manager oh, of course. at, at yeah. Armadale Regional Council constitutes a formal submission. Um, uh, content through this, you, your say surveys and so on will be collated and reported to council, but a formal submission is in, is in writing to the general manager of the council. Uh, the next one is, are you saying that after 2021, the LSPS will sit on top of the community strategic plan? And that's not the way I understand no, it. No, no. Um, what, um, apologies if, if this wasn't clear, the LSPS will sit um, in effect beside the, the CSP, the community strategic plan. Um, the LSPS will assist the community strategic plan in the delivery of the land use planning elements. So they're separate documents driven under separate pieces of legislation, but they're they're linked together. Yeah, linked together. But as long. part of a suite of strategic planning documents that the council will now have. Uh, what opportunity is there for the community to articulate blue sky aspirations? Um, I, I, Margaret, I, I guess the, the answer is that um, in, in terms of a sub, submission, but we will also be undertaking additional strategies and studies as we move forward. So, for example, the, the village um, strategy work and so on that we're proposing to do uh, will will take people back to you know, what are the important things in each of their villages, what needs to change and so on. So we will be working through that over the next um, year or so as we as we look at each of the places more specifically. Yeah. This is a you know this is a local government wide plan to identify the priorities in the first instance. Yeah, so it's not it's not and then not set uh, there's that review process that, that we run through with it as well as Stuart outlined earlier. Uh, several New South Wales councils have identified climate change. Um, 
This is Dorothy in terms of uh, Blue Mountains local government area. Um, Dorothy, I would I would recommend you put a submission in. Um, this is very similar to what Annette uh, had a little bit earlier in terms of uh, how Kiama's strategic planning statement has brought um, priorities in. So uh, we would welcome that um, that submission. Um, we'll arc, so that the last bit will are LSPS formally embrace similar principles and state them in the LSPS as other councils have done. Um, I think where we're trying to go is the, the, the sort of the triple bottom line or the, the quadruple bottom line when we bring infrastructure in to reflect the, the objectives of the local uh, environmental planning and assessment act. Um, a thought is that at the moment the Z numbers have, are growing without limit, very different to original plan. Um, I, I don't, I can't comment on that. Um, so we'll have to take that one on notice, Margaret. I'm not sure about that. Um, you're probably right, but I, I don't know the answer as, as to why or if that was what was proposed. Uh, what happened to the process for the master plan and that the that had consultation and a group of community people in the panel over a day to discuss? Is that information included in this process? Um, we, we might tag team this. We had a session with the members of the citizens panel. Um, I mentioned right at the very start of this slide show that um, the council adopted to uh, on the 19th. It's worth going and having a look at that uh, council resolution, Aileen, because uh, the second part of that resolution was to stop work on the master plan. So um, that's essentially been a, a, a rule or a line in the sand drawn there. Um, does the LSPS consider water security? Um, well, well, in terms of any planning for infrastructure delivery yes. in the future, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it's an important element. Just going back to a part of the previous question, um, work that was undertaken for the master plan process has been and will continue to be incorporated into the LSPS and the, and the sub plans as they evolve over time particularly the place-based uh, the place -based work that is proposed. Uh, we've got a couple more. Will assumptions of population decline indicate state government has no plans for redistribution of population from metros to regionals? Yes or no? Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I, can't, I can't comment on that, Margaret, whether they, they are doing that as a, a active or non-active um, approach. What we're dealing with is their population projections. Whether the government uh, tries to influence those, those natural population figures, I, I can't comment. Um, we need to make Armadale a regional a magnet for young people. Uh, what, uh, what ideas about achieving this? Um, in, well, I want to crack at that. In this plan, probably not a lot now. As we move through the other actions within the LSPS, potentially some stuff will come in there. Uh, one about jobs growth, obviously, um, and uh, even the, the tourism uh, element of the plan. Did you want to add anything more in there? No, I think they're, they're, they're all issues that we need to consider going forward whether it be arts and culture, whether it be tourism, whether it be economic diversity, there's a whole range of a suite of things that we need to consider moving forward. Um, the regional plan was based on LEP and land use compiled over a decade ago before ARC declared a climate emergency. Many of the new policies, e.g. Eco ARC, were adopted. Is there any way of developing some interim proposal rather than waiting another two or more years? I'm assuming you mean interim proposal to the regional plan. Is that how you're reading that, Stuart? I, I think partly the answer is you know, the, the council has a number of advisory committees and working groups that are considering these matters. A number of strategies have been prepared and are under development. Um, those things are being considered by the council um, beyond the regional plan process. There'll be an opportunity to raise it through that process when that happens, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop looking at those things as as they're being evolved now. And if they fit into these plans, then then we will incorporate them. 
um, and or look at them through the, our community strategic planning process as well. This is this is one of the documents that councils use to deliver on its strategies and actions that it undertakes. So we have to work out where's the most appropriate place for council to be applying its resources and through which document. Um, is uh, DPI safe and secure water consultancy report available? If not, when do you expect it? Um, I'm unable to answer that, so I'll take it on notice unless you're able to answer it. So we'll take that one on notice, Dorothy, and come back. Um, was hoping there would be some more innovative opportunities for Armadale City to have a variety of housing forms. Looks like there's nothing on this at the moment. And I think it's a double bunger here, but the LSPS is a much higher order document, uh, isn't it, than the CSP? No, there may be not. Uh, in terms of the housing form, I think that's what Stuart was was mentioning, we need to look at that in terms of our, uh, our population and housing um, makeup. Um, but that would be that would be something that comes through in the actions as we move through yeah. in the implementation of the LSPS. Uh, the next one is, but the LSPS is a much higher order doc, isn't it, than the CSP? Um, this was similar to an earlier question in terms of the hierarchy. Um, I would say no. The LSPS has sort of come from the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. The CSP comes from uh, the Local Government Act. So the two acts are both basically working within local government but are driving for different outcomes. One is a land use plan and the other is, uh, is the CSP being uh, actions within, within the LGA. Um, what information needs to go into a submission? Um, well, that's uh, Cecilia. That's the information that you you want to send through to us. Um, it, nice and succinct would help us in the time frame that we have. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we'll take uh, your your comments yeah. on if, board. I guess um, if if I can try and simplify it, if if there is, if you can identify a particular issue that you'd like to comment on. Um, and or a specific reference within the document itself and then um, I guess the facts and circumstances or the uh, um, that explain the issue of that is of concern to you in relation to that that matter so um, trying to try and be specific about the thing that's of concern and and why it's of concern to you or indeed um, and if you'd like to support something there's, you know, there's the opportunity to do that as well Oh, we've got two questions left. Uh, yep. Uh, Place-based work. When will the community see these outcomes from the master plan work? Um, if you can take that one. That's all your special. Well, that we mentioned that a little yeah. bit earlier. That's um, an immediate action, and so we're looking at it towards the end of this year and moving into uh, the beginning of next year. So I would think we would see something. Yeah. Well, it's we. Sorry, I'm, I'm partly being distracted by reading the question. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> and, my, and, my, and, and difficulties with my glasses in this light. Um, we are working through a, um, a program to um, do the place-based work in each of the villages during, during next year. So we, we have started and we have some ideas on that, um, but we're hoping that the new year might also bring some opportunity for us to engage with people um, a little more differently than we can at the moment. So um, it's during next year, um, council, res council resources, of course, permitting, but that is our current plan. Uh, good evening. Under the tourism banner, has the New England Rail Trail been considered formally or will we need to provide a submission via the Have Your Say? Uh, this one here, mate. Yes. Under the sorry, I'm, yeah, you're right. I'm not. Um, I well, I I would recommend to everyone to make to make a submission in relation to any of the issues that are of interest to you. I mean, the council is obviously has has made some resolutions, considered reports, and made resolutions in relation to the the rail trail. Um, it is you know something that sits sits under tourism probably more particularly but uh, I'd, I'd recommend that you make a make a submission it's 
it's perhaps something that that is a, a subset of, of that rather than a headline item um, in terms of how we're addressing the, a whole range of things under the tourism banner. Uh, final question was how many people do we have participating in the webinar? I can tell you now that the computer's telling me nine. Um, that doesn't mean that we've had people come and go because I haven't I haven't been watching that through the through the webinar. So um, and that is the last question. So being almost a quarter past seven, um, I'd like to formally thank you all for participating um, and providing um, a listening ear. And uh, thanks Stuart for all his work and effort in um, preparing this. And I apologise for the uh, the little technical issue I had at the start of this to get it all working. So uh, thank you for your patience. And thank you to those of you that are thanking us currently. Oh yeah, <laughs> very cool. Excellent. This has been a new experience. So uh, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to meet face to face at some point in the future. Excellent. Thank you guys. Have a lovely night and um, look forward to yeah, seeing you in the future. Thanks. Bye. Now. I'm going to go.